It needs no introduction. Please welcome Nabi Abdul Rashid. Assalamu alaikum. I said, Assalamu alaikum. So who was born in South London? Oh, no one's brave now. <laughs> yeah, hi, my name is Mohammed Nasir Nabil Abdul Rashidi, Muslim man of Ganesha. That's right, Mohammed Nasir Nabil Abdul Rashidi, Muslim man of Ganesha. In English, that means Joe. Um, yes, I'm very Nigerian. I come from the Islamic regions of Nigeria. Yeah, somebody knows, goodness. Yes, I come from the Islamic regions of Nigeria, and um, you know, we're very popular for, um, we, we have Sharia law there, you see. Now, if anyone's in the audience and doesn't know Sharia lawyers, that basically means um, we, we give very uh, <coughs> hostile punishments to um, crime. <laughs> Which means we're not very popular with the rest of Nigeria because we know what they're popular for. <laughs> I can say that because I'm Nigerian. Because basically, <laughs> it's true, go, go back and say that, you might get punched. <laughs> See, like, where I'm from in Nigeria, if you steal and there's something you don't need, they cut off your right hand. So we don't have reoffenders. <laughs> we have lots of left-handers. <laughs> All I'm saying is don't jack a phone in Nigeria unless it has hands free because <laughs> you'll be needed it. You know, you guys have, you know, here what do they have? They have six months of playing PlayStation in prison and then probation. With us, it's no probation, no PlayStation, just amputation. Just <laughs> You know, in Nigeria, we don't have overcrowded prisons. No, we just have lots of handicapped parking spaces. <laughs> and, and in Nigeria, North Nigeria, like when we have a job interview, nobody even does a criminal background check. It's like, if you want the job, raise your hand. This <laughs> always happens, man. I swear it out. Hey, now, 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 now. Now. in London. I went to Holland. I seen Somalians in Holland. 
And the same thing, X-A-A-W-A-L-A. What the hell is that? <laughs> I did not know about the Hawalud. Is it me? Or when you step into a Hawalud, yeah? Are there always like 20 guys at the till? And none of them knows what the hell you're talking about. And some of them took two buses to get there. To come there and not talk to the guy. They come and they're on the phone to Somalia. And then they're eating this really funny vegetable. What's it called? Mm. And his wife's always in the corner selling some clothes. That's the complete hawalad. Complete hawalad. But you know what? We're not too different. We're all the same. The only thing that divides us is our language. Like, for example, do you have those relatives that you have to call uncle? Yeah. The ones that always seem to appear when you're doing something dumb. Yeah. I mean, you can just, you know, the, the one day and something happens, you always have that uncle that doesn't know your name. <laughs> Super stuff. Remember, I have this uncle, he's really religious, really yeah? And like, he's always, you know, no matter how good you are, he always, he's always there to catch me doing something wrong. The other day, he added me as a friend on Facebook. <laughs> I'm up at two o'clock in the morning, I'm chatting on Facebook. He sends me a message. Why aren't you praying Fajr? <laughs> I type back, why aren't you praying Fajr? <laughs> Be right back. <laughs> I was in the mosque the other day, and someone saw me like making dicker with my beads. He was like, stop for that, that's wrong. It's not so now. The Prophet Muhammad didn't used to do it. Put the dicker beads away. I respect that. I was like, okay, uncle. I put them away. Later, I was walking out. I saw him in his car. I stopped him. I pulled him out of his car. I took his car. He said, what are you doing? I said, you're driving a car. That's not sooner. <laughs> the prophet had a camel. I suggest you start walking to the nearest pet shop. And I'm going to have to ask for your Nikes. Because he didn't wear Nikes. It's not sooner. Wow. Now, the credit crunch, yeah? How many of you are affected by the credit crunch? Boy, the credit crunch is bad in my bits, you know. It's terrible. The other day, I got robbed in South London. It's not funny. How dare you laugh at me? I was terrified. These four guys come up to me, yeah? And I, I know, okay, being robbed by four people isn't special, but I'll tell you how I know they were credit crunchy. There was four of them, but they only had one knife. <laughs> they come up to me suddenly like, yo, blood! You know those guys that when they walk, their arms don't swing, but when they stop, they swing? <laughs> what are you looking at though? Yo, blood, swear down, man, oh, shanks, you know. Man's on this thing, you know, fam. Oh my, oh my days, blood. <laughs> but they were organized because they were passing the knife to each other to talk. Like, does anyone else have anything to say? Yes, yeah, over to you. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, like my colleague will say, blah! <laughs> Man, I'll shank you. Now, the last guy that got the knife was a bit. Because he got the knife, he was like, oh my god! <laughs> you are gonna give me your money right now, okay? <laughs> this was a tall man, you're always messing up the robbery. Be quiet, I told you, only the knife holder may talk, okay? Talk to the hand. <laughs> Man, you know that I ran while they were arguing. People say I speak, I've been in, in this country for two years, three years now. People say I speak English really well for someone who hasn't been around for that long. But the joke is, since I come to this country, my English has become worse. Come on, you've all been to parts of London. You, you, ever walk up, you remember when a bear was just an animal? <laughs> now it's any number above five. I was in court, some guy was like, so, Jerome, tell us, how many people beat you up? I saw one, two, three. Brother, I saw bear man, you know. There was bear man in the place. People, I have advice for you, you know. Try not to take dunya too seriously. Because, you know what, no matter how much you like something, or how much you enjoy, even if it's food, it always comes to an end. And sometimes, you know, we don't get a warning for the endings, you know. You never know when something you really, really like is about to end. Do you guys understand any questions?